Well, <laughs> let's get started. It's time for Hot Topic. Well, I went out last night. I can't explain this new life other than it feels so right. Let me tell you, I did all my proper responsible things, phone calls, meetings, dinner with the boys, and so on and so forth. My, my son and my um, nephew, they're here. So then, You wanna go see the God? Damn right. <laughs> Everyone knows I'm talking about Rakim. <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Every story on this show isn't for everybody. If you don't know who Rakim is, shame on you. If you're a tall girl and you hate on short men, shame on you. <laughs> Let me tell you something right there. I felt like, first of all, Raw, great performance. I went to this place in Queens. Shout out to Big Fish doing big things. Thank you so much for the invite. Rock Kim performed. It was a whole bunch of old heads in there, including me. Shout out to all the old heads. We was dipping it and doing it. It was like, Another one of those supper clubby kind of places, dance floor not required. The lobster, the shrimp, people were having their drinks. The, mu the music was old school, like EPMD, you know, old, not old, like all that. And we were doing it like we were 23. It was wonderful. <laughs> Rock Kim walks in, every, it's just like pound, pound, pound. He comes over, we hug. I got, ch like, sh thank you, Rock Kim. And you know who else I ran into last night? Ooh. Somebody I hadn't seen in Sense Forever. You know DJ Mr. C? DJ, I hadn't seen DJ Mr. C in well over 10 years. DJ Mr. C was an integral part in me meeting my um, husband uh, back in the day. I forgive you. Um, <laughs> he, um, Mr. C was very integral part of my, my family and stuff like that. I hadn't seen him in a long time. Last time I saw Mr. C, he was you know, a fat, straight DJ. And, and, and now he's a, he's a thin, very comfortable with himself DJ. If you know what I'm saying, you know the story. I'm, I'm gonna let C tell the story. C, you know I wanna invite you here, but I don't want you to just um, be in for Boof. Um, oh, hi, Boof. <laughs> Some sort of code where the DJs, like they invite one another. By the way, Boof was my ride in and my ride out. We had a good time, right, Boof? <laughs> anyway, um, but I want to invite C here. So now he's a thin, comfortable with himself DJ. And one thing that he said to me before we both shed a tear and hugged, we hugged each other like we were on the Titanic, me and Mr. C. <laughs> No, and, and Mr. C, you know, used to be Big Daddy Kane's DJ. He's an icon unto himself, as C is. Uh, you know, he's on the radio and does what he does and so on and so forth. But, um, you know, he said, Wendy, now that I feel so comfortable with myself, implying, you know, that he's um, crossed over, girls. Can we say he's gay? <laughs> that, that he likes boys? If he says he, he, um, he, we have he to He's been outed him. shamefully every place. We just never talked about it here. Yeah, we, we just have to wait for him. Yeah, no, we, no yeah. we're gonna wait for him. No, he, and, and second of all, and then I said, and I feel so free too, and he knew what I was talking about. And we hugged like two old school friends for dear life. Yeah. <laughs> and he's all thin. And he's got no wrinkles. I asked him if he had a facelift, he laughed. But he's got no wrinkles and he looks good and, and he's happy and you know, just, you know, people just, when you live in your own truth, yeah. life is good. 
Live your own truth. All that happened and I was home by the 11 o'clock news. <laughs> you know when you're older and you dip it and do it, you gotta pack a lot of action in to get home and get responsible for the morning. <laughs> anyway, all right, so now look. The Bachelorette, you watched that. Yes. Oh. <laughs> well, the men on, or the men on the next season of The Bachelorette have been revealed. One of the contestants is very interesting. Good, good picking producers of that show, because um, this will get me interested. Um, he's a sperm donor who helped create 114 children. <laughs> Well, okay, his name is Mateo, and he's 25 years old with 114 kids. <laughs> DMX, he's got you beat. <laughs> so he goes to Georgia Tech, or he went to Georgia Tech. He's a smart man, he's a mechanical engineer and he's got a job in consulting, oh. as a consultant, um, he managed uh, management consultant. So he's very smart. And you know, a lot of times, I've never you know, examined the whole um, sperm donor uh, thing, I don't know how much it costs, it apparently it pays more than it does donating blood. <laughs> you know, because I, I remember when I was in college, I had friends who regularly donated blood for money. <laughs> you know, you have no money. Back then, I guess they weren't testing the blood to see you know, how you partied. Cause, Cause they were taking college kids' blood. Anyway, but these days, sperm donors can make $1,000 a month. Oh. Holler at that magazine. <laughs> they send you in the other room with the magazine and the Petri dish, I guess, and you do your thing. You know, it's like you get paid to masturbate or something like that. I... <laughs> anyway, um, first of all, to me, this is a deal breaker. He needs to tell Hannah. Hannah is that bachelorette who lost to the Virgin last, um, last season. That was the gimmick last, last uh, cycle of, of Bachelorette, that the, Colton was a virgin. Yeah, a virgin. He didn't, he didn't pick Hannah, so they kept Hannah as the bachelorette, and now they're hooking her up with other people. The thing about Hannah is that Hannah's not likable because she thinks she's better than other girls. <laughs> she comes from that beauty pageant world, and I know girls who come from the beauty pageant world, but they don't walk around criticizing other women so horribly. I mean, we all talk about people, but I mean criticizing like, oh my gosh, you know, you're, you, know you look really bad, you need to lose some weight, or that outfit looks bad on you, or, or you're not really that pretty, or these girls don't even bother wearing makeup, or they wear too much makeup, like she's one of them. So anyway, so this guy, back to Mateo. 114 kids, and he's 25. None of the kids are his. Now you know what they say about when you donate your sperm. It's free to, to be donated to whoever, whatever woman wants it to be implanted. He doesn't know who these kids are. To me, that is scary as hell. <laughs> Can you imagine? You know, you're with a guy and then you find out. Like at what point, at what point in the dating process do you tell somebody? I almost feel like these days, because the world is going so fast, you need to get a lot of stuff out by no later than the third date oh, with somebody. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, like maybe on the, on the first date, you release a little bit of information, not to scare them off so you get a second date, but by the third date, these are critical times that we live in right now and we need the information quickly. We don't wanna be falling in love with a man who has, look, when, he, when his kids turn 18, they could show up at the door. And the way I look at information these days, nothing is private. You people with no, uh, confidential clauses and all that stuff, that, that stuff it's so, so much hooey. People tell, doctors talk to their um, other friends about us at their cocktail parties. Not Dr. Roz though, he'll be out here later. He'll be out here later. Not Dr. Roz. But, but, that's Lisa's man. Um, but you know, lawyers talk about cases they're trying and name us you know, at those cocktail parties. We all know people like this. You know people who are professionals, cops and stuff who aren't supposed to talk, but they talk, you know? So I feel like 114 kids. First of all, at least 10 women who have been implanted are not all together and are gonna come looking for him 
you know, damning him for it, making his lifetime. I feel like the lab or the lab zoo, wherever his sperm was sitting and waiting, they're not so confidential. You know what I'm saying? Eventually, you'll be able to sue your way to find out who your baby's father was. These women, I get it, they pick him because he's handsome, he's really smart, and he's got young sperm, he's 25. He's been doing this all through college, so he probably started when he was 18, you know what I mean? At $1,000 a month, that was more money than, than we were making during college, doing whatever it is that we were doing. Don't get any ideas, by the way, you college boys. I'm not, this is not, this is not a good thing. I think that this is kind of wild and sloppy, and, and you should have to fill out papers if you donate more sperm more than, I'll give you five times. I'll give you a Brady Bunch six, but no more than that. Like, like, no more than that. Well, it will kind of make me want to watch. Hannah gets what she deserves in the season. <sighs> season 15 of The Bachelorette premiere is uh, on Monday. That'll be May 13th on ABC. <laughs> yeah. It was good times. Just say, where am I going tonight? <laughs> oh no, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not going anywhere, I forgot. Now I'm saving myself for the ball on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a ball on Saturday and they're real long and then afterwards you always go out for breakfast and then, then Sunday will be Mother's Day and I'm gonna spend it just the way I like it, in the bed under the covers with the blinds drawn, <laughs> watching TV, because I was out all night. <laughs> uh, Aisha Curry, you know Steph Curry's wife? Yeah. I don't know her, but I like her in my head, you know? She seems like a real one. Yeah. Well, Aisha says that she wasn't prepared for the pressures that come with being married to a famous athlete, Steph Curry, that's his, his wife. Well, they've been together since they were really young, so all she's ever known was that Steph got a little preferential treatment. I guess, you know, in high school, you know, he was the cutest and all the girls liked him and, and he was popular with the guys. So she just assumed, I'm already with a superstar. How much more starish can it get than high school? Then you go to college, it's a little bit more starry. Now he's in the NBA and apparently the starry is to an all time high level because there's very, there are a lot of women with no respect for a marriage. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. A lot of women who know your man is married yeah. and, and will have the nerve to be right up under him, right under your nose. <laughs> Aisha says that, <laughs> Marco, Marco, it was lit. <laughs> you really did miss something special. Look at Boof's smile. Look at Boo's smile. <laughs> Earlier uh, in the week, Aisha revealed that um, uh, there was an instant instance, uh, she was talking to Jada Pinkett on the Red Table talk show that Jada has, that a fan crossed the line with her. Well, just look at this. I'll never forget, we were wanted to go buy bikes one day. Riley, at the time, she's less than a year old, and this lady, this group of people come over and they're trying to ask Stefan for pictures and autographs. The woman opens the car door, Ooh. sticks her body in the car, and she's like, oh, let me see. I'm like, no, like, get, get out of the car. She goes, oh, honey, you know what you signed up for. What did she sign up for? What did she sign up for? You know what I'm saying? She signed up to be married to a man that she loves. They have beautiful kids. They can't help it if they seem like a picture-perfect family. I mean, there's no such thing as perfection, but as perfection goes, these two have got it in spades. And, and for you lonely girls who can't keep your hands off other people's men, there's a hot place in hell for you. The conversation went on, so, so first of all, so the girl like hopped in the car like that. I, I'm surprised, first of all, that, that, that women are that brazen. But they are, because it's one thing to be dressed seductively and you see a man that you like and he's all booed up across the room and you lick your lips at him or something like that. That's different. But that's real tame compared to these days when 
hopping in the car, the kids, what? Aisha says that um, it also kind of bothers her that female fans throw themselves at her, basically ignoring her. You know, it, like ignoring Aisha, like elbowing her out of the way to get to him. But in, in all cases, I feel as though a woman is only gonna do that if the man lets her. Most of the time, if a woman's doing something like that, she's got nothing to lose, you know what I'm saying? If she's doing that to a married man with a family, he's got everything to lose. So if you bite back, man, then you lose. And, 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 um, and, and he's not biting back. I never hear anything about Steph Curry and other women or anything like that. And Aisha, to me, is like a, a, real, a real one, a real body, real comments and stuff. And she was saying that it's funny because now she's with Steph, she's been with him like all of her life and men don't look at her. And she was saying on this show that, you know, well, what is wrong with another man looking at me? I'm with my husband, but you know, sometimes a girl feels good when she feels strange eyes all over her. Cardi B, right? Cardi B is talking about the rumors of her having fake abs. Remember we were talking about that on TV. People were rumoring that. I didn't, I didn't know whether she did or not, but I explained to you what um, ab etching is and that you know girls do that and, and so on and so forth and doctors offer it and it, it, it's a real thing. If you don't wanna work for your abs, you can buy your abs. Yeah. Well, Cardi uh, wore this outfit at the Billboard Awards last week and that's when people are like, oh my gosh, look at her abs, she just had a baby. You know, what's up with that? Excuse me. And in this day and age of everybody having surgery, Cardi says that her abs are real and here she is telling you. Yes, I got a f***ing light bulb done. Yes, I did. But what I didn't get was ab etching. Now y'all trying to play like I ain't never had no packs. I always have packs. If I always have packs, I even have packs after I gave birth. Y'all could go to Google and be like, and search Cardi's abs. Y'all will see that I had always all the time. So if I did light bulb, right, and I sucked out all my fat, and tighten up my skin. You don't think my bones are showing even more? I need ab etching for a bitch. I'm naturally abbed up. So her, so her abs are real. Let's take that off the table. The most important and distracting thing about Cardi is that no matter what she says, I just love to hear her talk. <laughs> Everything that she says, if you notice, if you rock a beat in the back of your head, Car look, 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 for instance, take a look at this. Y'all could go to Google and be like, and search Cardi's abs. Y'all see that I have always, all the time. So, if I did life all right, and I sucked out all my fat and tightened up my skin, you don't think my bones are showing even more? I need ab etching for a bitch. I'm naturally abbed up. She's just so lovable, I can't. She's just so lovable. So those are her real abs. You know, but, but like Tyra Banks, hi Tyra. Tyra is 45 years old, have you seen this picture? She birthed her baby, she's on the cover of Sports Illustrated, she's been there. This is her third time being on cover of Sports Illustrated. They say that she's the first black woman, she was the first black woman on the cover of Sports Illustrated back in 1996. And this is what that picture looked like. Wait, we don't have all the other pictures? Oh, we'll do the Google in comparison. Tyra still looks like Tyra. And that's a good thing. She's thick in all the right places and abs are good and abs are cute, but sometimes guys like it's soft and, and voluptuous. And she looks good. And by the way, by the way, Tyra, while your body is working and that new life of yours is working, changing your last name is not working for me, I'm sorry. Your name is Tyra Banks with a KS at the end. She wants to change it to the X at the end. No. Now look. I'm not calling her that either. I'm calling her Tyra Banks with a KS. But look, she says that the X stands for Xing out cookie cutter beauty. Well, first of all, Tyra, you are a cookie cutter beauty. 
in that way, I mean, a cookie cutter beauty to me is somebody that you look at immediately, you don't have to squint and say, oh, she's an odd beauty. Like Jane Hutton is not a cookie cutter, or excuse me, Lauren Hutton, the old model with the gap between her teeth. That's what I call a non cookie cutter beauty. You know what I'm saying? Tyra to me is cookie cutter, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. Anyway, but um, Tyra, nobody's calling you Tyra Banks with an X, okay, girl? <laughs> But we are calling you beautiful and sexy, and we've got more great show for you, everybody. All right. Friends of the show, Dr. Oz is here, but up next, it's time for Celebrity Lookalike. So grab a snack and come on back.